The Shiny Happy People documentary is shocking viewers around the world for its intense look into the fundamental Christian cult, IBLP. Um, I've gotten so many messages from a bunch of y'all that have watched the documentary. Just can't believe how insane it is. But here's the craziest part about the Shiny Happy People documentary. It does not even begin to scratch the surface of just how dark and sinister this cult really was. And and it's, it's actually not the first documentary uh, that's been released about IBLP. There was actually an article uh, that appeared years ago in Chicago Magazine uh, called The Cult Next Door. That was turned into a 30 documentary, but it didn't get the kind of attention that Shiny People, uh, Shiny Happy People has on, uh, on Prime Video. Uh, side note, I did want to mention, I, I, like I said, I've gotten a lot of messages from y'all, but my favorite message that I've gotten, and Bryce, you are absolutely going to love this, uh, my favorite message that I've gotten is about the cult leader, Bill Gothard. Uh, one of my buddies, who also happens to be one of my favorite stand-up comedians, actually sent me a, a message um, and said, <laughs> here we go, ready? Why do they pronounce Bill's name Gothard when it's clearly got hard? <laughs> because <laughs> bill did i mean bill got hard for unfortunately uh women that were way too young you know um i think viagra <laughs> might be looking for a new spokesperson we <laughs> we'll just get it lean get old bill it. got hard in there lean he's into got it. it um in part one we uh we talked about the beginnings of iblp and how bill gothard really built his cult empire on the backs of fundamental Christians and, uh, and homeschoolers. In this episode, we're gonna take a, a really close look and focus on the training centers uh, that Gothard established all over the world uh, with help from local governments, wealthy donors, and primarily a literal army of cult members. Um, so that's what, uh, that's what we'll be focused on this time. Uh, Josh, can you pull up the, the picture of Bill Gothard and Mike Huckabee? It's the, it's the next slide over. Um, I mean, this guy was so plugged in to local government. I think this is when Huckabee was still a governor, uh, that he and Bill Gothard were close friends. Uh, he was also super close with David Green, the CEO of Hobby Lobby. That's where a lot of his donations came from. Um, and he built up these training centers, I mean, primarily here in the States, but, but really all over the world too. Oh, yeah. Uh, Josh, go to the next slide. Uh, and this is going to be a picture of the Indianapolis training center. Uh, this is actually a training center that I spent some time at that, that we'll talk about. Uh, I think the, the, the crown jewel, though, was the training center here in Texas at Big Sandy. Josh, go to the next slide. Um, and this is where uh, they, they did their training for the Colts paramilitary. Uh, this is the Big Sandy training center. Uh, Bryce actually met one of the women that was featured in the Shiny Happy People documentary, Lindsay Williams. Uh, you had a pseudo relationship with her. You originally met her at a seminar and then later met her again at a training center, I believe. Josh, there's a, the next picture should be of uh, of Lindsay Williams, if you can pull that up. Yeah, that's she her. She was a friend. Okay. She was a friend. Right, okay. Friend. Yeah, not, not, a, not a romantic relationship. I had just barely thought about courting her when she left. No. <laughs> <laughs> Almost had a chance Bullet dodged. to get Bullet uh, dodged, to get arranged marriage. So to, Lindsay, to Lindsay Williams. I need to get some more goats uh, together, but so, I didn't have it. So you originally met her at, at a seminar, right? Right. So we were both working. So all of these uh, seminars that went on for a week, they had, of course, something called the Children's Institute so that you could right. leave your children and they wouldn't you know, fall asleep or act out. And, of course, they had all of us slave labor kids teaching the children, keeping them mm -hmm. occupied. So doing songs, songs, not dancing because dancing and, is evil, but uh, right. no, I along. wasn't one of the leaders because they took one look at me and said, mm, <laughs> let's keep him away from the children. So, you so you, the you can pass him. out the glue. That's what I got to do is pass out the glue. Um, <laughs> He's like, Who wants glue? Uh, what happened to all the glue? I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I no certainly idea. didn't eat it. <laughs> <laughs> didn't smell it. So, um, yeah, I, I worked with her a little bit during that week. And I remember distinctly that she was, like, leaving. And I think she was literally, I think she was on her way to headquarters. To go know, work at headquarters. To go work at headquarters. Which she actually talked about during the Shiny Happy People documentary, getting invited to go work at headquarters, which was, like, the ultimate Absolutely. That's promotion. what you wanted. 
in the cult. Yeah. 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 You wanted to go work at headquarters because that's where Bill Gothard was the majority of the time. Right. Uh, and you would get more one on one time with him, uh, yeah. which this guy was basically a prophet. I, Everyone I, considered him like a holy man prophet. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think that unless you were under his eye and a female headquarters was a little bit more less restrained. Okay, it was it was a little more relaxed. A little more relaxed because it wasn't okay. it wasn't a single big facility. Got it. It okay. was it did have one, you know, big office type thing, but then there were like houses uh -huh. that people went to. Uh -huh. And so I think they had a little bit more freedom. So they weren't all living on campus right. like a lot of the other training centers. Exactly. Okay, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they they got to have a little more, you know, fun. And and headquarters was like just outside of Chicago, right? Oh man, it is in the luxury part of Chicago. It is, it's, <laughs> of course, like it is. The, it's down the street from like McDonald's uh, headquarters and just multi-million-dollar homes. It's great. The property value. I, I remember the state had to take a chunk to build like an off ramp, and they had to pay them like twenty million dollars or something. I I could be off on that number by a couple million here or there, but had I know to it was pay millions. The cult. Yeah, yeah, because wow. they had to do right of way. They needed to take some land for like a freeway thing. Well, I mean, we talked about it last episode, but the cult was making in the early 2000s. It was reported the cult was making 60 million dollars a year off of all his activities. Of course, which is, I mean, that that's just mind-boggling, dude. It's yeah. Where where did that money go? Because it wasn't to feed us. No, and it certainly it certainly never got redistributed to the cult victims. Uh, no. You know. Um. Okay. So you originally met her at one of these basic seminars, which, as we stated, is is kind of the, the outreach program for the cult. Uh, and th those were their most popular in like the 1970s and 80s, when millions, I think the number was over 2 million people total attended all the basic seminars over the, the, the history of the seminars. Right. Uh, so you met Lindsay uh, originally at that seminar, but then later ran into her again when you were living at a training center, right? Yes, uh, Josh, hit hit the next picture because we got to we got to show Brandon again his oh, uh, yeah. yeah his guest appearance on the documentary. There he is, right there in the middle, face partially obscured, pre beard. Oh yeah, pre, very well pre beard, well, and also pre goatee. No, yes, <laughs> you had to go. You had to bring up the goatee phase. <laughs> this baseball coach goatee. I've noticed that uh, most men on here are clean shaven. Was that a thing? Yes, that's a very requirement. Much so. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Very militaristic uh, in their rules. Yeah. Um, okay. So how many training centers did you work at total? Um, three. Three? Dallas, Oklahoma, Australia. Okay. For, for you know, longer than a couple of days stay or something. Yeah. Okay. So three total, but I, I think the, the, the total number of facilities around the world was like over like 40 or 50, right? Uh, I mean, that sounds high, but it, it's possible because there were like little, little ones and then there were, you know, big ones. Yeah. Um, I mean, as, as everything is in right, life, you of know, course, little ones course. and big ones. Um, yeah. There was, you know, some of them were f full blown facilities yeah. that were old hotels and some of them were like, Oh, these are log cabins. We got land. We're going to build more log cabins. So well, we can yeah. house more troubled youth. One of the log cabins is where you would go if you were just beyond hope, essentially. Oh Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what was the name of that one? Do you remember? The Log Cabin the Program. Log, the Log Cabin <laughs> Program. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you would just go off into the woods. You would get and be isolated with a, a mentor. A, a mentor. And, yeah. And, and, you know, then they would have you build the cabin that you lived in or something. Uh -huh. Very, the, very old school prison type situation. That that was one of the uh, that was one of the punishments that I got threatened with, actually. Yeah, uh, Josh, go to, to the next build slide. Your own log cabin? No, to go have to have to go spend months at this log cabin. One on one with a mentor. Isolation. Yeah. Who, who are these mentors? Uh, typically, oh, they speaking, could be younger than you, uh, but most sometimes. likely they were they were like 18, 19 year olds uh -huh. that had been like just fully indoctrinated. They well, got through some sort of special training. Yeah. Usually they were graduates from the alert or the equip program, which yeah. we're going to get into a lot of those programs in episode three, which uh, I mean, that so alert was the paramilitary. Yeah. Josh, go to the next slide. There should be, uh, this is a, not all the training centers. Uh, but some of the pr uh, the prominent ones. So you've got Indianapolis, you've got Yara. That's the one that you were at, right? Uh, Bryce, the one in Australia. Yes. Uh, Eagle Mountain in Arkansas. The Riverfront Character Inn 
for a while, that was kind of like their biggest and baddest facility. That used to be a Hyatt Regency mm -hmm. that was converted into one of the training centers. Well, Oklahoma um, City uh, was the was a Holiday Inn. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's and that's the one that you worked at and, and ran into Lindsay again, right? Correct. I yeah. spent way, it felt like four years, but it was only two. You spent two years at the Oklahoma City Training Center? Yeah. Wow, dude, two years. Yeah, that's time I'll never get back for sure. I mean, the the best part of this whole thing is I do have friends all over the world. Yeah, you really do. We, we mm -hmm. have connections all over, and we all... You know, when you suffer together, mm -hmm. it builds strong bonds. Um, the other thing I'll say about the Oklahoma City Training Center, a lot of directors at these facilities were tyrants. Yes. They they they, they managed their own little clique, little cult, and then when uh -huh. Gothard showed up, they would fake it all. Right. Not Oklahoma City. Um, for everything that there was to be said bad about the Institute, the director of that facility never lived extravagantly, mm. never played favorites, as far as I could ever tell. Okay. So kudos, at least on that. Now, he also thought, you know, fun was basically a sin. You could walk in a circle in the parking lot for exercise. So we, really? we had, like, no, very, very little actual entertainment and or fun. So a dictator, but a dictator whose heart was in the right place, potentially. Yeah, and no, not, I don't know of any abuse either. Oh, okay. Really? He just, it, he didn't, it was not in his nature. Okay. Um, it was a tight ship. Sure. But if there was any weird abuse happening, it did not come from him and he did not protect it. Okay. That I am aware of. So he wasn't enabling or condoning behavior. Correct. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So you were there for two years. Just kind of like walk me through, because I have my own experience at the training centers. Yeah. Um, but I think it's probably very a different baby from your experience. experience. Yeah, well, yeah, a baby experience, but a very intense experience. It was, true. Yeah. So t tell me about, like, what a day in your life looked like. Well, I went from just going there and ministering, which had me uh, working in the kitchen. So I was okay. one of the guys working in the kitchen. I did eventually get hired, and I was in an office. And so I, you get up in the morning. Now, it was optional, but you could go down at 6 a.m. in the lobby uh -huh. and read your Bible with all the other guys. Oh, a little, little Bible study? So optional, but noticed. Yeah, and highly encouraged, I'm highly sure. Highly encouraged. Yeah. So I'm not an early riser. I may have done that a few times, and then was like, no. <laughs> um, so get up, eat breakfast, big community breakfast hall, you know, lunch hall, go up to the office, work in the office, go down for lunch, back to work, get off at 5, dinner. As soon as you're done with dinner, you immediately have chores. Okay. So now I have to mop the kitchen. That was one of the chores, was mopping the kitchen? Well, that was my chore. Oh, that was your chore. Okay. It was okay. assigned to mop the kitchen. All right. And then when that was done, if there was evening activities, they would there would be like maybe a 30-minute to an hour buffer. Okay. So you finish your chores, you go up and relax <laughs> before coming back down and, I don't know, singing or let's watch the basic seminar. Every year he had us do that. Oh, so you had to watch the basic seminar every single year? Yes. Wow, dude. Okay, so you didn't have, you, you had no downtime. Were you allowed to go off campus at all? Only because my parents kind of insisted. So like my sister had a car uh -huh. and they're like, ah, we think that they should leave occasionally and just, you know, get away. Yeah. And so we would. Now, it's Oklahoma City in the 90s. Do you want to go to Walmart or the mall? <laughs> <laughs> you can go to Brahms, dude. Uh, Brahms ice cream. Oh, legendary stuff. So, how, I mean, how often blue. were were you allowed to go off campus? We would do it on a Saturday, maybe twice a month if we were lucky, or once a month. And the rest of the time, you're just in this converted Holiday Inn. Oh yeah, dude. Okay, so were there seminar uh, aside from the basic seminar? Were there other like programs or conferences or? Oh yeah, we held events all the time. And okay. We held the business events. There was. A like four times a year, we had this big conference for CEOs. Okay, and that was a big deal. And that you're you're you know you're up till midnight or one a.m. doing stuff, vacuuming the carpet. You know. Oh yeah, you got to keep that shiny red carpet yep. looking good. I was in charge of materials, so I was always making sure all the materials were out. It was yeah, we're, we were hosting things continually. Okay. okay. Um, and then there were several programs that had their headquarters out of that facility. Okay, and and one of those programs um, is the character first. Oh, program, yeah. yeah, and we'll be we'll be getting into that one when we talk more about the programs in episode three, or part three, I should say. Um, 
Okay, so you were busy pretty much all the time. They, they just didn't allow for a whole lot of um, recreational well, downtime. You know, if they had let me have downtime, I would have had ideas. Mm, maybe go talk to a girl or something, right? Yeah, for sure. Because that was not allowed. No. Well, right? No, no, no. Not only if there were other people, and I don't mean in the same room. I mean, like, if there was two girls mm -hmm. together, then I might be able to say something to them in the lobby. Okay. But I would, I would maybe at the most, because these are people that sell every day, but I might wave to them in the hallway. I'm not going to go down to the hallway and greet them on purpose. Interesting. So there was never any kind of one-on-one -on -one conversation with a female for you? Extremely rarely. Thankfully, my sister was there and she worked, you know, right there with me. And uh -huh. I got to eat with my sister, which meant I got to eat with other girls of siblings of people. You know, we got to kind of be together, but sometimes, you know, troubled youth like yourself <laughs> might use that as an opportunity yeah. to sit at the table and sit with some girls. And that's, that can't, can't be doing that. Can't be doing so that. You, you are known for trying to have sex with everybody. Whoa, Josh, no. It's not true. That everybody is, not, that is, yeah. is a really broad. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a very no. general uh, statement. Females your age. I didn't, oh, look, well. I just wanted to talk to them, and, and that I couldn't do very well. No, I'm saying him. He was, yeah, yeah, Oh, him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that the, the program that I was in, yeah, that, that, was, that was very different from Brandon's experience. I mean... So, so you, I you was couldn't... running programs. He was in them. You yeah, see true. the difference? Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. very true. So, so the, 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 the life that you had, especially at the Oklahoma Training Center, um, still extremely rigid, right? You, I, I mean, obviously, there's, there's no dating whatsoever. You could barely even talk to a female. So, uh, certainly no physical contact, right? Oh, physical contact. Well, okay. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. So, I mean, this is this is too close. Yeah, uh, right, right. If, practically if, too if close. If I was a girl yeah. sitting this close to you, having this kind of conversation, this guy's not enough. He's obviously we could pay him off. So no. true, true. Yeah, yeah. We uh, could have been bribing producer Josh because I'm not to let us cold. have this. Well, no, just in general. You're just not trusted. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's just <laughs> <laughs> wait. Just uh, no one trusts wait, 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 you. Wait, wait, wait. Am I in the cult or not right now at this point? You're not allowed, Josh. Oh, damn. You're not allowed. You're not a uh, member, but you're attending like this guy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you could be. Uh, it's like an like you're allowed to attend open meetings essentially. Yeah. Like Josh would be welcome at the seminar. Yeah. And, and if he was attending a program at the training center, he'd be allowed in. But other than that, I, I mean, they don't really allow outsiders in. No, no, no. no. You got to pay. You have to be there for a reason, attending a conference, you know, whatever, right? Yeah. The only time they let certain. Uh, things slide per se would be when people that were not part of the organization were there to attend something. Right. Right. Like one of the conferences, right? Uh, the CEO conference that y'all had four times a year, right? The CEOs had an issue staying at our facility when they walked in and they were like, where's the TV? Really? Sorry, bro. We don't have one, but Wait. we're real near the bus stop. If you look out your window, you could see some funny stuff. <laughs> There's some entertaining stuff. Did did the CEOs coming through? Well, look, actually, let me let me just ask you this: Did you know of any like weird stuff going on at the Oklahoma training center? I did not. I I was in line. Like, you know, we talk about how people get broken. You know, you right. break their people. So that right. they, I was pre broken when I got to the cult, mm -hmm. and I did not want to shame my family, and I did not want to be out of anybody's will so i did what i was told mm. and nobody told me anything if there was anything going on now oklahoma city i think there was a couple of people or not people there was a couple of things that may have happened mm -hmm. but they it you, the gossip wasn't there nobody mm. it didn't get out they would just get removed immediately well i might see likely, people yeah. removed or cycled or they went up to that facility instead of being at this facility and and nobody told me what was going on and I'm like, okay, uh, all right. And this was, you know, internet was barely a thing. Now, one of the things that, that you mentioned is that, uh, you know, when you met Lindsay Williams for the second time, it was at the Oklahoma Training Center. Yes. But she was coming there from headquarters. That is how I recall. Okay. I, I feel like I remember that she was there and, and I remember we were kind of confused. Why is she here? 
Well, yeah, why isn't she at headquarters? Why we, in the world would you come to Oklahoma when you've been at headquarters for the past however right. many years? Right, and, and usually if they did something like that, there would be some sort of excuse to come. Like, oh, she's going to help because the conference is, uh, is two weeks away and she's yeah. here to help with the... Uh, she's extra manpower or whatever housekeeping yeah yeah, yeah exactly we're gonna have her scrub 200 toilets it'll be great but i i think and 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 i believe she she kind of alludes to it in in the documentary is that she kind of fell out of the good graces and that's why yeah. she got removed from headquarters and right. sent down to oklahoma that's what i think was happening again you know yeah. i didn't it, i got that vibe mm -hmm. and so i stayed away mm. so i wouldn't get in trouble well, I mean, not that you could have spent any one-on-one -on -one time with her anyway, no, no. but you didn't even associate with her oh, no. because at that point it, you're, you're basically treated what well, the point that I'm trying to get across here is you're, you're treated like a pariah. If, if you have messed up or, y you know, not, not even messed up, man. Like if you don't have the right attitude, potentially, they didn't really assume positive intent. Correct. You know, like if you're a woman, you could tempt a guy you could sneeze and tempt a guy and if you right. were a guy and you were paying any sort of extra attention in any way shape or form especially unsupervised then you were trying to you know defraud her defraud or, her. or lusting or whatever right man i hate the word defraud <laughs> so much what, what about what about like dude on dude or chick on chick i'm sure there is see okay so that's a really good point josh because i was i was talking with with another comedian about this i guarantee you that there was a lot of that kind of stuff going on um without anyone ever knowing because you you could just say oh yeah we're gonna go and have a, a personal one-on-one -on -one bible study i'm gonna go build a log cabin <laughs> <laughs> no no i i need an accountability partner <laughs> Dad, there we go yeah will you join me for some accountability <laughs> yes this is my accountability buddy mm -hmm. <laughs> because I, I mean, it, it, that that was one thing that was very encouraged. Of course, uh, was have your one-on-one -on -one accountability partner, have your your prayer times and your Bible studies, Help in the privacy each other of your room. Yeah, memorize scripture. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was the big one, right? That was a big part of the program that I was in. But yeah, I I think a lot of that was going on without anyone knowing about it. Um, and that was probably the the only thing that that could happen without anyone finding out. Eh. I mean, I've heard a lot of crazy stories about other training centers. Really? And it, it really, it, and that's where that whole, like, the dictator with their cult comes into, because you could get away with stuff. Mm. If your family was somehow in good with the director, then it would be like her, her word versus his word, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. he can roam the halls at night when nobody else can. You right. Know, lights out at nine. Uh-huh. Yeah, and so I, th that's kind of the same thing that that I heard about other uh, other training centers mm -hmm. is that you know there was there was hanky panky happening, shenanigans, uh, sh yeah, rampant shenanigans, shenanigans. Yes, uh, don't think I didn't. I wanted shenanigans. I just oh, yeah. <laughs> there were none to be had. <laughs> He's passing by people like them. shenanigans, <laughs> shenanigans. <laughs> just giving the all that. Uh, well, yeah, little Here's little little bit of this maybe. Um, I, that's way too, more than what I needed at the time, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> he literally would just put his hand out like that and I'm be like, like, can you put your finger in it? <laughs> Hold my hand and say my name. Now, we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> that's creepy. <laughs> it's very creepy. When you were in Australia, were, were things joking. any different in, in the Australia oh, training center? Dude, I, look, Australia was night and day. Really? Um, that was the last experience i had and it was the best experience so so what was different about australia from from oklahoma city thousands of miles sir <laughs> of miles. time zones it so australia is interesting um when i arrived the director was interesting and i definitely got the play the political dictator vibe from that director okay and he man he tried to do certain things he so like i was there to work in a very specific department on a very specific thing and this mm -hmm. is a much smaller facility we're okay. not talking about 80 staff we're talking right. about maybe 20. okay and it was not a big giant building it was like a, it was like a corporate retreat is what it used to be so yeah i mean josh pull up that picture again uh that yeah the the one that you're already on what um 
Not, yeah, not of the, of the training area. centers. Yeah, so at the very top of this one, you see the Yara training center, and that's exactly what it looks like. Oh, it, was, it looks like it was a beautiful. corporate retreat. Yeah, it was beautiful. And so this this director, one of the things that he did after I'd been there like maybe a month, I could tell he was doing it to have either to curry, try to curry favor with me or to get, I don't know, but he was like, Brandon, you're going to be in charge of kitchen cleanup. And I was like, huh? <laughs> He didn't, he just announced it in front of everybody. He didn't ask. He didn't come to me beforehand. He was like, you worked in the kitchen club and said, you're going to be in charge of this. I'm like, uh, okay. So you're managing kitchen cleanup. So now, now. I'm managing kitchen cleanup. So, okay. and it just, I could immediately tell just because I had been watching this guy that yeah. he's doing that. So he can either get information from me about this department that I worked in or give me some power and I'm going to feel good and want to, I don't know. It was weird. Uh huh. You just caught a vibe immediately. Very much a vibe. Yeah. I, he was a former intelligence officer. In really? A, in a Middle Eastern country. Wow. dude. And, um, and that's one of the things about the cult, man, is how plugged in they were to, to the government, to the military. It was, it was scary, dude. Yeah. Like, the amount of leverage that they had was yeah. insane. Um, okay, so his, so his wife said some things that I was like, that's socialist. She's, <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> I Do they to, know she's saying this stuff? She oh, and it was it was a very weird vibe. They left abruptly, so really? so a person was being sent over from headquarters um, to help with the training center. I don't remember mm. exactly why. Now, and this happened literally right during nine eleven. Um, really, and that guy got stuck in London for like four days. Um, and before he even put his foot on the soil, they were like, oh, we're retiring or whatever. And they left. Now, I'm not going to say this person's name. He's very well regarded from headquarters. Okay. And everything I know about him, he was always an upstanding person. He's a good guy. Good, but also insanely smart. Like, he okay. was a negotiator. He was, like, purchasing, negotiating. Like, he's like, this is, we're going to run a facility. Let's run a facility. Yeah, yeah. He showed up. Oh, best director I've ever had. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, was he more relaxed? Was he cooler? He was logical. It's like, look, there's 20 of us. We all sit in one big table and sit wherever, and it's no big deal. And guess what? We didn't play footsie or nothing. You know, we got to just enjoy each other's company. Y'all weren't playing footsie? Oh, I would have been playing footsie immediately, Missed. dude. That's why you're not at the table. Straight for the feet. Yeah, no, he would not have been at the table. <laughs> but, I mean, we had volleyball courts. We had racquetball courts. We had basketball court. And we would play we, like, every like night. Like guys and girls? Yes. I Dude, think. I think. <laughs> pretty Hang sure. On. I Go, think. As I recall. I mean, they're in skirts. Well, and that's one of the things, too. Like, and, and we talked about it, like, some of the rules in the in, in, in the first episode. Like, women always had to wear skirts. And I'm not talking like, I'm not talking like calf length or knee length. Okay. Oh, God forbid. So nice. I mean, no. no these are yeah. ankle length skirts mm -hmm. that they're playing physical sports in. And the, the hilarious part was that most of the times they were wearing like tights or something under the skirts. I think it gave them an edge, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they were wearing pants under the skirt so that if yeah. the skirt flew up, their modesty wasn't caught. Well, just wear the pants, dude. And to, and to be clear, it's not like it's a cool environment. This is Australia. Yeah. So it was, it was warm I and mean, we're wearing pants. Oh, it was swampy down there is what you're saying. We're wearing pants. Yeah. So, you know, everybody was in, not in the same boat, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just so crazy to me like like how um fascist those rules were and they made no well, sense you know they're they, they, it's opposite of what they were saying you're like oh this conference is called teaching we're, we're training young men to be leaders which is right. total nonsense they never trusted us an inch right no no and and, and quite honestly they couldn't because any even slight infraction was going to bring dishonor to the entire training center yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it didn't even have to be a serious offense, uh, <laughs> at, at least not in my, my experience. A serious offense, other than in Oklahoma City, a serious offense was subjective. That's true. Very, yeah, that's very, true. very subjective. Who are you? Who do you know? Uh -huh. Who did you do what to and with and uh -huh. all of that? I mean, so so for someone like you or me, I, I mean, giving... Giving a female a side hug? No, no. That I mean, no. that could be grounds for dismissal. Absolutely. You're you're gonna have to go home now because you touched her, and that was clearly your lust. Mm -hmm. You have now stolen that side hug from her. If I hadn't been so afraid of 
what my mother would have done. I could have used that as a method to get out sooner. <laughs> like I gave her a side hug. Boom. I'm out. Sorry, y'all. But what if you're under 18 and they can't like kick you out, kick you out because you're under your parents? Uh, no, your parents signed authority over. To? To the cult. To the to the whatever training center. So that's actually a perfect segue, Josh. Isn't that more Marxist than anything? If, I mean, if it's, they own your children, dude, it's something. I, I don't even know what you would call it, but it's it's crazy. We is were what it is. serving Bill Gothard, not God. Correct. That's that, it. That, that's exactly what it was. That's it. Um. So you had this experience at at the training centers. Yes. And, and j- just to make sure everyone understands how widespread this was. I mean, you saw you saw the graphic of just a few of the training centers. These things were all over the country and all over the world. Oh yeah. And and, and Bill Gothard would fly on a private jet from training center to training center, making appearances, giving speeches, I, conducting conferences, seminars. I didn't even know about the private jet. Yeah. I had no and I don't think he did that either the whole time or maybe for very long, because private jets are extremely expensive. But I don't even I didn't even know that was something that he did. I knew mm-hmm. that we had so at Oklahoma City Training Center, sweets and sodas and things of that nature were not so much banned as highly discouraged. Like yeah. I could buy it and take it to my room, but it was never provided. Right, right, right. And they didn't want you to flaunt it either mm-hmm. to the uh, troubled youth. Correct. Um, I used to use the window ledge as a refrigerator <laughs> during the winter. Just put that sucker right you up have there. Your, your Dr Pepper sitting out there. Absolutely, yeah, dude. In the case. Uh, um, and so when, but Mr. Gothard has a sweet tooth. Yes, he does. And so he always has like a sweet at every facility. Correct. He's got a stash. Well, no, I mean like he had a nice room. It was oh, usually oh, oh, two oh, rooms. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Two rooms yeah. with the pass mm-hmm. through door or whatever. Yes. And then they would stock it with the presidential stuff. suite as it were. Yeah. So I have a really great memory of like one time he'd left and my sister was good friends. I was good friends with the head housekeeper and we all went in there and. We ate his snacks and played some games. No, <laughs> wait, what kind of games were you playing in there? Not those kind of games. Oh, My no, okay. sister. Oh, right. Well, but her friend, uh, the head housekeeper. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Could have been some cool no. games. No. Uh, it, was, it was a type of dice game, but not so, that dice game. Oh, Farkle? Yes, that one. Oh, you were playing Farkle? Heck yeah, we were. <laughs> of course What's you were, Farkle? dude. Oh, that is the most popular homeschool dice game. They love it. Bunko and Bunko and Farkle were like Dutch Blitz and Spades. Dutch Blitz. Dutch. I never played Dutch Blitz, played so spades? I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Not. Wait. Hang on. It's a card game, Josh. Yeah. Just okay. Yes, we played Spades. What did you think? I, was I don't know, dude. I thought you were going to try to make some wild accusation about. By the way, playing cards were evil. The playing cards That's... themselves, the designs. Yeah, I remember hearing something about that. No, I, I cannot recall the suicide jack and as to yeah, why that. that they were, but they were. So uh-huh. certain card games like uh Phase Ten and Skip Bow and stuff, which had their own Uno. They didn't Uno have was the, the devil, huh? <laughs> Did you say Uno? <laughs> was the devil. <laughs> No, no, I think mean, Uno was actually okay. We would we would tell them that it meant that you just played by yourself. What, what was that game where we all sat in a cer- mafia? Wasn't I, that I, like I vaguely remember? Some, yeah, we look. We figured out ways to entertain ourselves right. occasionally. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just re- I remember playing. That was not at necessarily an uh, a, a cult conference that I went to, but a homeschool conference, and it was super popular there. I'd never heard of it, uh, but played that mafia game. I, you all sat I in a circle. Vaguely and, heard remember. Um, it. So, so you had these experiences at, at the, the Dallas Training Center, the Oklahoma City Training Center, the, so the Australia again, Training Center. So, again, every training center is an entirely different yeah. subcategory. There's Dallas, not a standardized experience. Absolutely not. Dallas was, okay, I was very, I was 15. Okay. And it was during the summer, so they didn't have the Excel conference going on, so mm-hmm. the, the whole place wasn't packed with, like, 180 young girls. Yeah, yeah. Um, but during my time, they had a midwife conference. Oh. Yeah. Now, these are not the young girls. These are older girls that are trying to get have a certification. and To be a doula. Right. Okay. So I had my 16th birthday with 40 midwives. Nice, dude. <laughs> that's hilarious. Beat that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and that, that's huge um, in, in the cult community, even in the homeschool community to a degree, is home births. You don't go to a hospital. I, I don't know as much about that as you appear to know, but yes, well, it is yeah. a, they, that was encouraged, you mm-hmm. know, I mean, we, you can't really trust authority. 
Correct. Unless it's unless it's cult authority, and then you have right. to trust it implicitly, of course, uh, blindly even. Um, so my my training experience or my, my training center experience was drastically different. Uh, and you and I have talked about this a little bit. There's there's articles on the internet about the program that I went through, uh, Life Focus. Uh, and this and was, how is your life been focused? Yeah, how focused has my life been? Well, um, so this this happened at the Indianapolis Training Center, right? Uh, which was just outside of downtown Indianapolis. Um, amongst, it was amongst the institute. It did not have a good rep. No, no, that was where all the bad people went. Do you remember what happened every morning? Do you remember? Oh, there were speakers mm -hmm. in every single room. Yep. And they would play essentially propaganda well, through the speakers every single morning. It would dude. start with marches. Yes. Sousa marches. Yes. So, classical music. Sure. Class for, for those of you who, who <laughs> don't know. Aggressive yeah. classical music. Wagner again. Uh, uh -huh. So one of the, like, they would have the, uh, the Christmas conference there where okay. people would come from all the other facilities and it was uh it was you know it was their only time that they kind of gave back to the staff so to speak you know big dinners and oh we rented out the ice skating rink and stuff like that and the first thing most of us did as soon as we got there is first we broke out our multi-tool the gerber which oh, of was course every big, homeschool boy has one big status symbol to have that gerber on your hip it doesn't yep. matter if you are in maintenance <laughs> the kitchen or an airport Dude, driver. Homeschoolers had, love a good holster for any Gerber. kind of gadget. <laughs> Look, if you had the Gerber and the Black Walkie, that's like you're you're above alert at that point. Oh the yeah, Black Walkie. You're the baddest. So of the, the bad. first thing that we would do is break our Gerber out and take that speaker apart. Oh, for real? Heck yes, dude. We would disconnect <laughs> that sucker, and we would put it back together because they know whose room everybody was in. Yeah, yeah. So we would leave, but we would reconnect it because we're like, no, we're not. We don't have anything to do at six a.m. We're all, we're guests, and I'm assuming you weren't getting your room tossed every day either, like we were in the Life Focus program. Not to my knowledge. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So for the program that, that I was at, Life Focus was essentially. Uh, rehabilitation for bad kids. Uh, well, that didn't work. Yeah, no, it, it, <laughs> it was a very ineffective program, as a matter of fact. Turns out, uh, guys like me, uh, they, they just couldn't break my will. No. Uh, and that was a lot of the guys that came through this program, at least in the class that I was. They had several classes. They, they definitely needed more time with you. Yes, yeah. Well, the, the, unfortunately, they did not. Well, fortunately, fortunately for me, they didn't get it, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was actually sent away to this program, this rehabilitation program, uh, because I had, uh, I had gotten a girlfriend, uh, that I met at church. Um, and so my parents, and, and once again, I just want to say my parents and I have a phenomenal relationship. They were doing the best that they could. They didn't know any better at the time. Uh, but they made the decision that I was going to get sent to this life focus program in Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, and so I show up at this thing, and I've, I've blocked out a lot of the memories. Like, yeah. I don't have a very clear recollection blocked of the whole thing. Blocked out or flushed out? <laughs> maybe, maybe a little bit of A little of column A, a little yeah. column B. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. So, so I get to this training center and immediately realize that, you know, I'm in here with, with actual criminals. Like, there were guys that had been convicted of, you know, armed robbery, grand theft auto, breaking and entering. I mean, they were using it as a rehab program for delinquent youths in Indianapolis, as well as delinquent <laughs> cult members. So you're saying yeah. you're saying you learned a lot. Oh, I learned so <laughs> much because I was actually a really good kid when I hit this program. I was Ooh. 16 years old coming into this program, I think 15 or 16. Uh -huh. So so I get to this thing and, um, you know, we 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 are sent to our rooms. Right. And you know what the rooms look like, but they were putting uh, four guys in each room. Pick. Picture a 70s, 1970s, 1980s hotel room. Yeah, or jail cell. Real awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, these were not nice hotel rooms. Uh, they, they, or they weren't nice dormitories. It was bunk beds, a dresser, and a bathroom. That's what you had. Ooh, bunk uh, beds. Yeah, yeah, we were doing bunk beds. Yeah, so it was pretty much sweet. room for activities. Pretty sweet, yeah. <laughs> Except there were two sets of bunk beds in each room. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, basically what they had us do was just manual labor. Mm -hmm. All day, every day. Uh, the first project that I remember working on, it was this barn that we went in and essentially uh, 
well, we 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 stripped it to the studs, mm -hmm. and then we were resheet rocking it, just you know, essentially remodeling this giant barn. I was it one of their properties. Yes. Okay, because there yeah. was that like other secondary property uh -huh. in Indianapolis yes. that was a farm mm -hmm. where we stored the orphans. Yes, that's right, dude. I forgot that that's what this place was. Yeah, it orphans was like an orphanage. Storage. Yeah. Yeah. So so Whoa, that was what? that was the yeah. <laughs> that was the first project that we had. Dude, I'm I'm telling you the extent of what this cult did is is almost mind-blowing. But they had an orphanage in Indianapolis. Orphanage storage sounds like child trafficking. It, no, I don't, it's not that. I, I mean, I don't that. know where the orphans I would say eventually it was, went. I would say it was tax breaks, maybe. That's probably true. But they also had an orphanage in Moscow. Yeah. Well, Moscow, that's Russia. They, that's where we came from. We imported our orphans. Yeah. yeah. We were bringing <laughs> Russian orphans from Moscow it to been, Indianapolis. It could have been a really long-term plan to like just have available mail order brides just on who knows oh, that's that's an interesting concept i'm, I'm gonna make a 90s reference that the institute is like an ogre which is like an onion and there's just layers <laughs> <laughs> and so, on the inside layers they deal children <laughs> <laughs> they are trafficking kids um yeah, so Allegedly, that was, that was the first project that, that I remember working on. I'm helping you out. Just uh, say the yeah, word. Yeah. Allegedly. 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 Every time. Allegedly. Allegedly. He told me that. Allegedly. Yeah. So so that was the first project. You know, we did we did a lot of street cleanup, too, in downtown Indianapolis. I remember picking up needles um, in, like, these back alleys. And once again, we're working with, like, real criminals. Yeah, but you were wearing, you know, jeans and a work. Oh, no, wait. It was khakis, khakis and a blue dress shirt. Yes, and a blue polo. Yeah. All yeah. you needed was like a wiping rag and you'd be a waiter. And we look like the lamest gang of all time. And everybody thought you were Mormon. Yes, that's true, too. What well, temple are you guys? I don't from? know if they thought we were Mormon. They definitely knew we were part of some weird religious thing for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it was just manual labor from sun up to sundown. Um, I remember going to a lot of the dinners and yet we all had to sit as a group. We weren't supposed to talk to other women. We weren't even supposed to look at other women. Like, don't even think about looking at them. Look, we turned the magazines around at, at in grocery stores. Yeah. So we well, were our even, mothers did. Yeah, I was true. Uh, I was not allowed to go off campus. No, uh, right, right. Oh, oh, oh you're, you're talking about at home. I just yeah, remembered yeah. an interesting little little story about how we were we were, I went out ministering in the neighborhood in Indianapolis when I was there for the young men's conference. Okay, like maybe twice, right? Uh huh. Um, I didn't want to get my hands dirty. It's fine. <laughs> so I remember this dude was saying how they were helping this old man's uh, cleaning up his yard and stuff like yeah. that, and he invited them down to the cellar and gave them some cider, and he was like, uh, "I don't know about that cider." We're like. <laughs> Bro, we're all gonna be wasted. <laughs> Have you seen Family Guy? <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys want your cider? <laughs> exactly. Hey, little muscly arms. You want to wrestle? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. I got glue sticks. <laughs> <laughs> Great callback. Great callback. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, it was primarily manual labor, and it, you know, honestly, that wasn't even that bad. The, the the labor side of it uh, wasn't awful. I mean, it was it was intense, you know, but it was more so the brainwashing that we experienced every single day. I mean, so so our group leaders in Life Focus, they would essentially just reinforce how problematic we were all the time, and that we really needed to uh, deal with our pride. We needed to submit to our authorities. Um, we had to to pray sing and memorize Bible verses. That was our recreational time was you will yep. pray, you will sing and you will memorize Bible verses. We were supposed to memorize the entire book of James while we were in this program. Um, so, so I did it was Psalm 119 in Oklahoma city. Oh, good for you. You were in prison. <laughs> that's what people do in prison. They yeah. Do I mean, manual labor and they read the Bible. Yeah. That's yeah. But they get cable TV, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and or so nights. I've heard. Or yeah, so yeah. I've heard. I mean, the, okay. Fifi's. So the big, <laughs> and, and they get to play drop the soap. We didn't have any of that. <laughs> Someone might've been dropping. soap. we don't know that. We for don't sure. know. Allegedly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I mean the big, the big night out. For, for the guys in the program that, that did well uh, was they all got to go play basketball at a gymnasium. I didn't get to go. I was, I was not allowed uh, no. because I, I was not behaving. Um, you didn't but have tattoos. That was the, the whole big thing, you know? Uh, so, so it was the, the psychological abuse 
we'll call it what it is, right? Uh, but even even worse than that, um, if if you if you really weren't doing what you were supposed to, or they thought you were problematic, or there was some sort of infraction, uh, they would send you to solitary confinement, uh, and that that is the thing that that almost broke me. Um, and I was only I was in solitary confinement for a week. Um, and, and basically all it is, and, and Laura Smith, who I, I had a relationship with, Laura Smith, uh, mentioned it in the, in the shiny, happy people documentary. It is, it is a room with a bed and a Bible and that's it. And that's what you had too. That's it. Yep. Sheets. That, uh, no pillow. Mm, yes. I had a pillow, I think. Uh, but they didn't, they didn't leave sheet. They didn't leave anything in the room that you could potentially use to try to escape course right um little did they know you grew up on macgyver <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna kick out this window unit how, ac how big is the room like this size uh yeah mm. but, i mean i would say about the size of this studio including the bathroom okay. this 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 studio with the bathroom uh this is bigger than my room in yeah. Oklahoma well City. I, I mean but like if you like carve out a corner yeah for, for the bathroom i think that's about the same size nah it's smaller in it's Oklahoma even smaller City. than that holiday inn sir oh holiday yeah true <laughs> so uh, I spent, I spent a week in there and I, I, at the end of that week, I felt like I was going crazy, dude. Uh, because the only human contact that you had was when they delivered your meals Yeah, and, and they wouldn't talk to you. Uh, that, that was not a socialization time. They would drop off your food and leave. Well, you're very introverted. You probably loved it. No, you, <laughs> I can see you were probably climbing the walls. I, I, at one point I had taken the mattress on my, off my bed and I was literally jumping on it, doing flips, like just going crazy in this room and, and and dude like a week like when you're in prison they'll put you in the hole for like 24 hours at a time but well unless uh, unless you're just like really bad you right know? so i was in there for a week one of my buddies was in there for like three weeks yeah. when he when he came out of there dude it like he he did not seem like the same person do you know uh, when he it's was day just, or night no, I, well, yeah, you, you could tell just because sun was coming through Okay, uh, you had a window. the window, but they had it boarded up. Oh, so you didn't really know, but I mean, you could see like light coming in, like coming in through the cracks. Okay. And then I would look through the, the AC unit too, cause I did bash out the AC unit. Um, but, uh, that, that, that part of it, that solitary confinement dude, uh, was intense. Yeah. Like just being alone in a room with nothing but a Bible for days on. I mean, it felt like I was in there for a month and they wouldn't tell you what day it was or how long you'd been in there. Right. So I, I just kind of lost track of time at some point. I, it was only like, like I said, a week doesn't seem like a long time, but after the first three days, it's just kind of like, who am I? Where am I? What is happening? And I know that that was like a psychological tool sure. that they were trying to use to break me. And the whole reason that I that I got put in there in the first place uh, was because they they suspected that I was fraternizing uh, with some of the girls on campus. Had zero proof. They just suspected it. But were they right? They were right. I okay. mean, yeah, they were definitely right. Of course right. they were. Um, course. You're like, it wasn't me. You're all hard in your khakis. <laughs> what? No. Uh, this is how I always am. <laughs> These are triple pleated. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's another thing. Your khakis, did they have to be pleated? They didn't have to be. I don't be, think they had to be. Wow. And, and actually, uh, it is the 90s. That most was of the... us in the Life Focus program, we wore uh, BDUs. That was like kind of the endorsed pants. The, the the military style with the cargo pockets or whatever, um, but yeah, I mean they, they they were right about they but they had no proof, dude. But that was essentially there was a buildup of things. The other thing that they did while I was in this program, they would confiscate your mail. So we were told that we could get letters and phone calls. I don't remember. I think I had maybe like one or two phone calls while I was there for like I guess that six week period or seven week period, whatever it was. Um, they confiscated my mail, though, for sure. So you just reminded me, one of the things that happened in Australia to that strange uh, uh, director. Yeah. He definitely was reading people's emails. Oh, so yeah, for sure. They Well, they had these, like, three public computers where uh -huh. you could, it was just set up in a way where you could email your family. Yeah. And he was, def they they were reading people's emails. Mm -hmm. They knew it for a fact. Oh, yeah. So, so while, 
while I was in this program, so remember, I got sent to this program after my parents discovered that I had a girlfriend, right? I had told my girlfriend, hey, this is where I'm going. I'm being sent away to this place. This is how you can contact me. But they would screen everything that was coming in. So years later, I found out, and I mean, this is probably four or five years later, I found out that she had sent me letters like every day. Mm. And they had confiscated every single one of them, sent them to my parents so that they could see what she was writing me. And I just never knew. Wow. Yeah, dude. Uh, you, you missed out on those teen spirit, sm spirit smelling letters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was probably spraying it with perfume. She was probably right. putting pictures of herself in there. Exactly. Never, got, never got any of it, dude. And, and you, you know, I, um, while I was in that program, uh, you know, I, I, I got in trouble. I got, I got sent to this prayer room. I actually got injured fighting with some of the other guys, uh, broke my foot pretty I, badly. I hundred percent believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, wasn't there as we know. I'm your cooler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're the guy that diffuses all the situations. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so, um, you, you know, ultimately, you know, after the prayer room situation, after the injury, uh, I did have a, a personal meeting with Bill Gothard. Oh, at the Indianapolis training. I Center. never yeah. got that. Yeah. I wasn't cute enough or bad enough. <laughs> and that was always the coveted thing is one on one FaceTime with Bill Gothard. And they even had a program like some sort of mentorship program where the biggest like, like the biggest draw of that program was that you would have a one on one meeting with Bill Gothard. Did they make you fast on Sundays? I don't remember. That was a thing. Probably no, no breakfast. And, and generally no lunch. So. I, I don't remember for sure. Um, they later denied all the stuff about the prayer room. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there was a big incident uh, where someone tried to um, unalive themselves. Ah, mm -hmm. that's why there's no sheets. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, someone tried to unalive themselves at the Indianapolis Training Center in a life focus program after mine. Uh, found them on the roof with cuts mm -hmm. Ooh. yep uh and they denied everything well we never locked them in these rooms that's just that's that's ridiculous that never happened they absolutely did dude and another one of my buddies who got sent to the prayer room he actually this is insane dude so he got sent away um and and then we just never really saw him again i was like oh where where'd josh go well, it turns out just yeah, to, yeah, just, producer Josh, not, not just to be Josh. clear by saying Josh, he's narrowed it down to 4,000 people. <laughs> yeah, everyone's name was Josh. Now, if you said Matthew, it would be maybe 6,000 yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, everyone had biblical names. And if you didn't have a biblical name, you got renamed. Um, no Muhammad. biblical name. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> so Josh had been sent to the prayer room. I don't know how long he'd been in there, but he like made this great escape from the prayer room. And the way that he did it was in the prayer room, they still had the speakers so that you could get your morning meditations and everything, right? Sure. He busted out the speaker to, so he could go through the wall into the next room and then escape the door. Yep. Wait, wait, wait. I don't remember the speaker being that big. No, but it was attached to drywall. So he just knocked a hole okay, through it. Cool. Yeah. Cool. You do. So you, he, he breaks into the next room, the adjoining room, and then escapes out that door, right? Nice. He rigged up the the the, the door handle on his door with uh, wires from the lamp that was in the room, the only light source that we had in the room, rigged the door handle up with these wires so that if anyone tried to open the door from the outside, it would Shot zap them. Him. Nice. This yeah. guy really did watch MacGyver. I, I mean, dude, it was it was crazy, like like kind of hearing like all the stuff that he had done, Play right? Play the Mission Impossible music but, <laughs> right now. That's what well, I'm hearing. No, because his booby trap did not work. Oh. Yeah, yeah, it didn't work. Um, he so was he home busts out of the adjoining school. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's yeah. the best place to learn about that this kind of stuff, true. though. He this had some true. paint buckets <laughs> up here, Home Alone style. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> so he busts out of the adjoining room uh, and, and essentially just ran away. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently... They caught him in downtown Indianapolis rollerblading uh, towards one of the train stations. How did he get rollerblades? I don't know, Where dude. I think so. I had brought some stuff with me that was essentially contraband, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they just took it from me. I guess he for somehow got to keep his rollerblades in his room 
and he snatched his rollerblades out of the room before he left, and that's where they caught him in downtown trying to get to the, the train station, uh, let's, apparently. Let's make this movie. I know, right? <laughs> great, dude. Absolutely great. I want to see it. That one, I mean, I mean, obviously, the, the psychological abuse is, is not funny, but catching a kid on the run in rollerblades. What did they do That's to him? The most, hilarious. That is the most 90s statement <laughs> ever. He yeah. busted out and we caught him rollerblading. Uh, they, they sent him home. Okay. They, they just sent him home. He or was like, mission accomplished. They, they may have sent him they may have sent him to, to one of the other training centers, like that's where he was really locked down. I, I don't know what happened to him. I, we never heard if, from him ever. If you get sent to a log cabin program, you're mm. not rollerblading out of there. No. You're not. And if you, you escape, where are you going? Nowhere. If you escape, you're escaping into like a hundred acres of Forest. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 that was that was Josh. And then the guy, like I said, the guy after me, uh or in a in a program after me, they they caught him trying to unalive himself. Um, and, and, and that was a fairly frequent occurrence from what I understand in the life, the life focus program. It was just, uh, it, it was nuts, dude. It, I think it was, it, it was insane. If they had put me in a prayer room isolation, I, that would have broken me for sure. Oh, dude, it was I, like, I've, I've never been through anything like that. And, and it's, it's hard to describe on a podcast, right? Oh yeah. And, and it's, it's especially hard to describe to someone who's never been through something like this. Yeah. Um, but, but it was intense and, and the entire program was, was extremely intense, but I, I ended up having that one-on-one -on -one meeting with Bill Gothard, um, Mr. G yeah, Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Gothard, right. As, as we all called him. Um, and, and he essentially was just trying to get me to confess. Oh yeah. He right? loved for you to confess to him. He wanted me to tell him all the sinful thoughts I had had yeah, wearing yeah. pants when he <laughs> any, <laughs> any of the sinful things I'd done. Um, you know, essentially accused me of defrauding some of the young women. He needed to load training his bank. Center. Yeah, he needed that spank bank loaded up, baby. Yeah, fresh material. Um, but I, I, I mean, I, I didn't, I, I didn't cave. I, I, you Good. Know, and, and ultimately, you know, I was supposed to, I was supposed to be there for the life focus program, and then they also wanted me to stay for, I think, a total of like six months or something like this, right? Um, but it was actually Bill Gothard who said, "No, he needs, he needs to go home." He just, we just need to get him out of here. He didn't give me any details of the thoughts he was thinking. I'm getting nothing. <laughs> I've got nothing from this guy. It's, it's wasted. Yeah. We're, it's just costing no, us time. It was because you were trying to steal his girls is what it was. That's, oh, did, that's, that's actually, it, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 Josh. I was, yeah. I was, I was pulling from his supply. Yeah. He didn't like it, dude. You were drinking his Dr. Look. Peppers. I was smashing his girl. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah so i i mean he i i do know that he suggested to my parents that that i go to like the log uh, log cabin program and my parents were like no we're not going to do that because i kind of explained to them some of the stuff that had happened strategically left out you know my part in it obviously yeah. um but i i think my parents were kind of shocked uh because they paid a lot of money to send me this program, too. This was not a free program. Never is. They paid thousands of dollars for me to go to this rehab. And uh, I ended up with a broken foot and severe psychological trauma. Oh, and yeah. how's that going for you? I mean, the... The, the, the foot I, is healed. I say the foot's healed. I deprogrammed myself pretty quickly after I got out of the cult with... Uh, uh, illegal substances. And then you I'm had to go to rehab again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know what? I never went to rehab again. Oh, wow. And that was one of the reasons that experience was one of the reasons I was like, I'm not going to rehab. I'll just stop. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to call, I'm going to white knuckle this until I've got it. Um, I know that I know we're getting, uh, we're, we're running out of time for, for this episode, uh, Bryce, but, um, there, there's still so much more that we have to talk about, um, related to this cult, Yeah, man. It's, um, it, I, we're just sharing our experiences, obviously very different. Yeah. But the other flip side is that we're guys. Yes. And the the ladies had their own different experiences, mm -hmm. their own different pressures yeah. you know, put on them by the mothers that were running around the training center. The mother and, and the men, especially the leadership yeah. in the cult. I, I mean, the scrutiny and pressure that they was they were under. I mean, it's, it's just, it's insane, dude. It's, it's absolutely insane. Um, so, so on the next episode, you know, we talked a little bit about Lindsay Williams, who was, who was featured in, in the documentary. Uh, I've mentioned Laura Smith a couple of times, who was also in the documentary and the personal relationship that I had with her. I'm going to talk about, uh, about that a little bit in the next episode. And we're going to dive a little deeper into some of the programs uh, that Gothard developed 
uh, his ties to local government, um, including a program that Bryce had a very integral part in launching uh. all over the country, dude. So, and, and of course the paramilitary, uh, that, that Gothard kind of built. Yeah. Um, so, so there's just a lot more and, and we'll be talking about that in part three of how to survive the shiny, happy people cult. <laughs> Part three of 968. Right. Yeah, and so we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go to therapy now. Because, um, yeah, uh, this has been extremely fun, but also uh, extremely traumatic. Uh, but thank you all for watching. We'll be back with uh, with part three next week.